Hello, my name is Monique, and welcome to this gorgeous day outside. I'm here filming this video today because I'm currently studying for the RD exam, and I wanted to just take a moment and reflect on my experiences getting to this point in the hopes that it can help you watching this video. So just for a little background, I went to the University of Connecticut in 2017, that's when I started, and I knew I wanted to be a registered dietitian. That's kind of a whole other story. But I was on the track to doing the coordinated program, which is when you get your bachelor's of science in dietetics and do your dietetic internship at the same time. And I ended up finishing in June of 2022, this year, right now it's July 2022. So I will be focusing more on my internship in this video, but the coordinated program, you know, the other aspect of that being the classes will also be incorporated since I did those at the same time. Also, I have this paper where I have some notes to keep me on track. So you will be seeing this throughout this video and just know that I'm just making sure that I'm on track. You probably can even see the reflection in my glasses, which is funny, but it's so bright. So I'm gonna keep these on, hi. <laughs> Okay, so my next point is a day in the life. What is a day in the life of a dietetic student, dietetic intern? Now, it really depends. It's so hard to come up with just one day. So I'm actually going to do two. The first day is going to be classes and internship, which does happen. Um, and then the next day is going to be sort of the extreme of internship all day. But there definitely were semesters where I had classes all day and then maybe the next day was all internship and so they were separate. So I'm going to start with the first day in the life. So first day in the life, maybe I get up around 7 a.m. and I get ready for the day, I go to breakfast and then I go to class at 9 a.m. It's about an hour. And then my next class might be at about 10.15 or 10.10 and let's say that's two to three hours. Then I'll go get some lunch then I'll carpool with some other dietetic interns and go to a long-term care facility, be there for three hours, where I will look at a patient's chart, interview them, start working on their care plan. Then I come back to campus and eat some dinner, exercise, shower, and go to bed in between 9 and 10 p.m. Now for that second day in the life, sort of the, the opposite, polar extreme of internship all day, which is what I did this last semester and part of the summer. I might wake up at 6 or 6.30 a.m., get to where I need to be 8 to 9, it really depended on the place, and work for eight and a half hours. That included a 30-minute lunch break. Then I would drive back to campus, have dinner, work out, maybe do like an hour of studying, and then go to sleep in between 9 and 10 p.m. I've got an ant on my knee, <laughs> so I'm just wiping that off. So I hope that was helpful. It really is, it's so different depending on the semester, the month, the week, the day, but that's just kind of an idea of what it really was like for me. Wow, this, I'm really in California. There's all these ants crawling all over me. All right, next point. I wanna go over my favorite and least favorite part of the coordinated program. I want to start with my least favorite. My least favorite was just how stressful it was. I think the amount of things that you have to do and learn in that short period of time is just stressful and I have tried so many different things so many different ways to make it less stressful and I think I found the best way but even then it was still very stressful so that was definitely my least favorite part I thought it was almost hard to like enjoy the program and what I was doing what I was learning because there's just so much going on in my mind at all times now for my favorite part I would say my favorite part was just the wide variety of experiences that I got I did food service at, you know, in a school system, at a hospital system. I went to so many different hospitals 
inpatient acute care, long-term care, with a wide range of age ranges and conditions that I saw. I did with the community, you know, there were virtual presentations, in-person presentations, I made handouts, I made social media posts, I wrote a blog post, went to food share mobiles, food pantries, just really all sorts of stuff. Um, and there's even more that I'm probably forgetting off the top of my head, research, counseling, etc. There are just so many things that I got to, that I was exposed to. And I think that was really valuable. Of course, there's no way we could, I could get exposed to everything in my program. There's so much that you can do as a registered dietitian, but I did get exposed to a lot. And I think that was really my favorite part. Now for my favorite and least favorite rotation. Now for least favorite, unfortunately, I have to say the honest truth is there were like a lot that came to mind, but I would say the one that comes to mind the strongest or maybe even first was my hospital food service rotation. And the reason why this was my least favorite, because I think there are different reasons depending on the rotation of why it would be my least favorite or one of the ones that I liked the least is that they just didn't really have a lot for us to do. So I actually did that rotation with another UConn student and I honestly was just bored the whole time because we would finish something really quickly and then they'd have to scramble to find something else for us to do. And some of, I, there was one thing that we had to do where we were handing out free muffins, cookies, brownies, whatever, and coffee to the workers just to, you know, free, like for a little thank you. But we weren't actually allowed to touch anything. So we're literally just supposed to stand behind the table for three hours and ask people if they wanted something and say hello and just be a friendly face. And we weren't allowed to sit either for whatever reason. Like there was some like rule that like we weren't allowed to sit. So it really was super boring. And I would say that was probably my least favorite just because I was bored the whole time. Favorite favorite rotation. So community is my favorite. I love community. I love education, nutrition education, making handouts, you know, education in the form of oral education, workshops, classes, things like that. And I did get a variety of experiences, but if we're going to go with a specific rotation, I would actually say it was my specialty rotation, which was community. Specialty is when you get to choose uh, what you want to do. So I ended up going with the Diabetes Wellness Center at Manchester Memorial Hospital. And I'd say that was my favorite rotation because for one thing, the environment was great, but I also just got to do so many things that I loved. I was only there for two weeks and I got to teach with another Yukon student four nutrition pieces of a diabetes class for two were for gestational diabetes patients and the other two were just for sort of regular diabetes patients type one and type two i got to sit in on some classes sit in on some one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions i got to make a cookbook for diabetic individuals which is super cool and so many other things it was just such a wide variety of things and they also really wanted us to have a hand in our schedules and they really wanted to provide what we wanted they wanted to make sure that we got out of the experience what we were hoping for and so i really did i really got out of it what i was hoping for so i would say that was my favorite this next section i want to give you some tips if you are a dietetic intern or you're thinking of maybe studying dietetics doing a dietetic internship i have some tips for you and of course i could come up with so many but I'm just gonna give you eight. So the first one, figure out an organization system that works best for you. This is so important, it's so basic, but like once you get in the program or you do the internship and you're kind of scrambling around and you're stressed and you have so much to do, it's just so nice to know that like you already have that down, like you already got the organization figured out. So how are you gonna be storing and organizing your emails, you know, are we using folders, subfolders? What are we naming them? Are we bookmarking websites that are really helpful? Do we have folders on our computers, on Google Drive? Like, what are we using? What are we doing? What are we doing with really important, helpful handouts from class? How are we storing those? How are we storing papers that we're getting for our internship that are, you know, about certain disease states and 
you know, protein recommendations for different conditions and blah, blah, blah. Like how are we storing all of these things? Are we using a file folder? Are we using a binder? Just make sure you know what you like, what works best for you, because you just want to have that down when you're in the thick of it. Kind of going along with that is also figure out a planning system that works for you, just to make sure that you, as things come up, as the program progresses, you know how you're gonna be able to get everything done on time. I always aim for early. That way, if it takes a little bit more, you know, extra time, it's it's done on time. So figure that out. I, I love calendars. I have like three, well, I, I'm not a student anymore. I had three calendars. Each one was for a different thing. And then I used my planner. And then on the daily, I had a sticky note with my schedule for that day on it. That just is what works for me. I know it's a little extreme, but you have to figure out what works for you and that will really help you. My second tip is for when you're in lectures and for this one, and this is what works for me. Again, do what works for you. But I find that it really helps to only write down what is not on the slide or some kind of material that you have access to when you're studying. Because, what, and I've totally done this, I would see people and I would be the person that would be scrambling to write everything down that was on the slide and then I wouldn't be listening to what the professor was saying, I wouldn't actually be soaking up the material, I would just be copying what was on the slide. And I found that really wasn't beneficial for me so then I started doing this and I found that it really worked. I would only write down what was, on the what was not on the slide that the professor was saying so I would just sit there and I would listen while the professor was talking about was what was on the slide and if they would add anything that I thought would be really helpful that wasn't on the slide, I would write that down because when I'm studying, I'm gonna be looking at the slides anyway, so all the information's on there, I don't need to write that down. So that's a tip for you. Third tip, rent all of your class materials if possible on Ched.com. As many as you can, rent them because most of them you're probably not gonna to wanna to keep anyway and then you're just gonna end up throwing it out or having to give it to the bookstore for like zero dollars or a really cheap price. It just makes the most sense to just rent it, you save money, and then you can send it right back. Some things you have to buy from the bookstore, but for the most part, you can rent. Do that. If you wanna buy something because you think you're going to want it later on, then go for it. But I, I don't think I bought and kept anything like the nutrition handbook from the academy but I think that was it so there you go save some money okay rent fourth tip start a group chat with your peers everyone in my program was on a group me chat and this was so helpful because when we had a really quick question that we didn't want to bother the professor with we didn't want to bother our preceptor with we would just put it in the chat and someone could really quickly answer it. It was great as well because in our program, I don't know if this is how it is in other programs, but there was a lot of miscommunications. And so it was just great to chat it out with your peers in a chat rather than having to get the professor involved, the coordinator of the program involved, the preceptor involved. It was just a lot quicker, a lot easier. And honestly, you feel better when everyone else is confused and you know that it's not just you. We also all had each other's numbers, which the director of our program actually did a really good job with. She collected all our numbers and then gave them to everybody. So if your director or maybe you're not in the program, but if no one does that for you, then try to get numbers of people that are in your classes or in your program or your internship, because that's going to be really useful for you or even their email. Any kind of contact information is great. but. Um, Definitely, I think phone numbers, because people really love texting. It's a lot easier, it's a lot faster. Phone numbers are really great, so do that. Okay, fifth tip. A lot of these next ones are about self-care, okay? So study breaks, super important. It's really, it's, it's just, you need to do that for your learning. It's going to help a lot. So I definitely recommend study breaks. And specifically, I think it's great to study within a time frame each day. So treat it like a nine to five job. So maybe you're gonna study from eight to four. Maybe you're literally gonna do nine to five. Only study within those hours and then just be done for the day and still take breaks within that nine to five, but really stay within that time frame. Also, I recommend, this is, I'm telling you like my secret, the thing that kept me sane 
during this time, really busy time of doing all of these classes and the internship all at once, which is taking one day off where I literally do nothing. I have no schedule, nothing. I don't even schedule calls with family or friends, nothing. I do literally nothing. I don't look at nutrition. I don't think about dietetics. I do nothing. Highly recommend just taking one day. Usually it's a weekend day. I usually do Sunday and just literally do nothing school related, no work. And I would even recommend don't look at a screen. Don't schedule anything. That way you can do whatever you want. Your head can just be clear and you can rest. A lot of the times I would sleep on those days. So that's a good nap day. All right, my sixth tip is to prioritize sleep, exercising and eating regularly. I'm kind of lumping in drinking water with eating regularly. These are just basic things, but we don't do them. Just be disciplined, figure out, have a cutoff time for sleep. I'm sleeping at this time every single night, no matter what, for me it was 9 to 10 p.m. So I would start getting ready for bed around eight. So important. Also really helpful if you use the time frame thing where you're saying, oh, I'm only gonna work from nine to five. Well, perfect, because then if I'm going to bed from nine to 10, like, okay, well, I don't have work to do. That's gonna keep me up late. So recommend that. Exercise, eating regularly, whatever works for you, do that. For me, I like knowing what time and days am I doing these things, and then I do them. Seventh tip is specifically with compliance for your internship. So these last two are more for your internship, specifically for that. And you need to get like shots and a yearly physical, CPR certification, things like that to be able to go to your internships. And I don't know if this is how it is if you just do the internship separately, but in the coordinated program, because it's drawn out over two years, Things expire, so it's really important to keep tabs on that. You will get emails saying when things expire, but it's great to even know it before the software or the site where you put in everything emails you because then you can really be on top of it and be early. So I would recommend just keeping track of when your things expire and then getting those updated and uploaded early so you just don't have to worry about them. So keep that in mind. And my eighth tip is to all your classes and all your rotations, bring snacks and a filled reusable water bottle. That way, that helps with the eating regularly part, right? Self-care, make sure you're eating regularly, drinking water, exercise, sleep, take care of yourself, okay? So bring snacks, bring a re filled reusable water bottle. All right, and my last, last point is what I recommend I have to specifically go with the coordinated program. I can't say what I recommend a specific internship because it was within my program. Originally, I was gonna say no because I think it's so stressful, the amount of time that you have to do everything. And I think it really, so my program was four years and I got a bachelor's of science in dietetics and I completed my dietetic internship. I think it should be five years. Now, actually this next class coming in, there's no more, coordinated program for four years. It's now five years and you get a master's because in 2024, you have to get a master's to be a dietitian, unless you're grandfathered in, which I'm gonna be grandfathered in. So that I think it should be six years. I think they need to add an extra year onto the coordinated program because it's just too stressful having to do all of that in such a short period of time. The only exception would really be if Financially, you just couldn't afford that and you really needed to do it in a smaller amount of time. But now I would change my answer to say yes, that I would recommend the coordinated program. And the reason is because, as I'm blanking, <laughs> So I would recommend the coordinated program because from what I've heard, it's really hard to get a dietetic internship right now. And I've heard many stories of people who literally just couldn't become a registered dietitian for like five plus years because they kept applying to internships, getting rejected for whatever reason, maybe literally they just didn't have enough spots. And then they had to keep 
applying because there just weren't enough places for people to go. And so that's something really nice about the coordinator program is I just didn't have to worry about if I was going to get an internship or not and when I would become a registered dietitian because that was already in. If I'm in the program, I get an internship. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that you got something out of that. If you have any questions about the journey to becoming a registered dietitian, feel free to leave those in the comments below. You can also email me at hello.moniqueava at gmail.com. And if you want to keep up with my journey of studying for the RD exam, passing, and also starting my business as a planning, gives me some background music right here. <laughs> you can follow me on Instagram at moniqueava.nutrition. And with that, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Get outside, get some vitamin D, and take care of yourself. All right, bye.